What I'm about to show you is the first of its kind in the world, which is why this took a little extra time. Let's see what we got in here. Just got a package in the mail. So let's dig right in. I'll show you guys what I got. Definitely gonna use these. Look at this tiny little engine. Two of my turbos is the size of this engine block. This just cracks me up every time I see this thing. I always think it's larger than it actually is. This thing smells like, what is that? It's kind of like stale gasoline and gunpowder. Just love that smell, man. That machine shop smell. Let me show you guys close up. A little bit of debris I gotta wash off here. But look at that beauty. This is a cylinder support system. Now, one of the biggest failures of a stock engine block with an open deck design is that these cylinders under a lot of stress and pressure are actually gonna move around, which is why a lot of people will do the block guards or they will fill their block with concrete, epoxy, so on and so forth. This is the best option available. You do have to ship them the engine block and of course they have to ship it back, but if you can't get this one just yet, I know that you will be able to get a 3A92 block done very soon because they just finished developing this one. Specifically for Dirt Gear TV, oh yeah boy, this engine block, whereas previously with the open deck design, was maybe good for 200 horsepower. I mean, I was really pushing the limits there with that tiny turbo. Now, this thing should be good for at least 500 horsepower. This engine block on camera looks a lot larger than it is. I mean, that's my hand. It's almost the same height and size of the whole engine block. My hand is the size of at least two of the cylinders. So this thing is itty bitty. And when you come in really close here, again, look at the size of my thumb compared to these passages. The precision work that's been done on this is really something else. So the cool thing, about the cylinder support systems. It's not just a block guard. A block guard is a rough fit that just kind of relies on a cylinder taper and drops in and just protects the top portion. Uh, the cylinder support system is machined precisely into the water jacket and you get the same uh, consistent pressures and support from the very top part of the cylinder to the very bottom part of the rings. It's much more of a precision process. In fact, they guarantee certain horsepower figures on a lot of the engines. So if you go on their site, Cylinder Support Systems website, you can actually look up the pricing for your engine block and they'll give you, if it's rated, they'll give you a rated horsepower, which is if you blow the engine up under certain conditions, under that power rating, they will refund you the cost of the cylinder support system. So I think that's pretty awesome. It's not something that you would ever get with just a generic block guard and it's certainly not something that you would have from just you know concrete or epoxy or using a block filler. If you have an open deck design and you're concerned about the pressures that you're running, this is probably your best case solution. So I am super excited about this. I'm gonna get it cleaned up a bit and uh, we'll pick this thing up pretty soon. I've been waiting on this for 14 weeks. Look at what we have here. Oh yeah, the good stuff. All right, Let's see what we got. First and only of its kind in the world. At the time of filming, there is no manufacturer that you will be able to find pistons for. Some of the guys claim that you can use some of the D16, the Honda D16 stuff. That's not true. The D16 stuff does not work with these engines. So you do have to go to a full custom option. What I did is I had the guys over at Tron put these together based off of my custom specs. Huge thank you to Barry over at Tron for putting these pistons together for me. One of the things that I had uh, Barry do over at Tron. Boy, that's a stout little unit, not a scuff on it. 
So one of the things that I had done with these units is we increased the size of the wrist pin. We went from approximately an 18 millimeter wrist pin up to a, what is that, no, oh, 19 millimeter wrist pin. Uh, reduced the compression to a nine and a half to one versus the 10 and a half, which was the stock factory piston was a 10 and a half to one. And what else? I did have the valve reliefs cut approximately one millimeter uh, deeper. So there's some extra protection there, an extra millimeter of relief cut into the piston. I'll of course weigh these two guys. This piston is specifically designed to be good up over 40 PSI. In order to get the ring lands and the rings as strong as possible is we did have to use an oil support uh, ring down here at the bottom where the wrist pin comes through. Focus. There it goes. See there's a cut out there at the bottom that meets the wrist pin. Fully floating wrist pin of course. Box number two. This is the one that I'm even more excited about. These are something I've been working on for the full 14 weeks. It's taken a long time because there's nobody doing any builds with the 3A92. It's not like I could just copy somebody else's specs and have and send them to a manufacturer and say this is what I want built. Custom 3A92 specs. The specs were developed between me and the engineers at Powder. Full, full, full custom everything. Try not to drop this one. Boomski. In my opinion, Power is doing some of the best rods in the industry. They are proven, proven high horsepower rods. The length of these rods is the same as factory. If you're shortening the rod, you now have a greater angle of attack, which puts additional stresses on the side skirts of the piston. So I did want to keep these as long as possible and we were able to manufacture and do just that. One of the main things I really loved about this design is the windage. When you have your rotating assembly spinning inside that engine, it's creating turbulence and wind, you know, windage inside the engine, which is what stirs up uh, oil and creates aeration inside the oil. And of course, the last thing you want is aeration inside your oil. Because if you think about it, like an H-beam rod or something like that would have um, a much flatter uh, surface area on this side of the rod, whereas the powder design does not. All right, shall we find out how the weight comes in on the new items? Now guys, you know that because of the nature of this build, I've been obsessed with weight, and of course the engine weight is no exception to the rule here, but at a certain point, you just can't use light parts. You gotta go to heavy duty parts, and that, of course, is going to add weight every single time. All right, it looks like it's gonna be about 19.7, 19.8. The original, I'll put our wrist pin in here. Okay, assembled. <laughs> nice. The side by side. Let's get a weight. Okay, 28 ounces. All right, 28.2 ounces. 